Hello everyone, this is R.S. Miller at TheEndTimeNews.org and today is August 16th, 2013. Fifteen security forces dead as violence in Cairo escalates. After Muslim Brotherhood leaders gathered supporters in mosque on Friday for Friday prayers, their supporters are now marching from northeast Cairo to the city center in Ramsey Square. According to a BBC News report, all roads leading to Ramsey Square in Cairo are being blocked by officials. A state of emergency is in force and police have been authorized to use live ammunition in self-defense. Officials threw tear gas to disperse crowds marching. Gunshots have been reportedly heard throughout several protesting sites. BBC journalists in Ramsey Square described the atmosphere as very tense and were advised by the crowd to leave as the area is too dangerous to stay in. Four new deaths were reported during the clashes in Ismailia on the Suez Canal between security forces and pro-Morsi supporters. Additionally, reports made by El Arabia say that 15 security force members were killed during an armed attack in Cairo. According to a Democracy Now! news report, as many as 2,000 protesters have been killed. Members of Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood have called on followers to march in protest in Cairo today after at least 525 people died when security forces raided two protest encampments filled with supporters of ousted President Mohamed Morsi. More than 3,500 people were injured. The Muslim Brotherhood says the death toll may top 2,000. Police and troops use bulldozers, tear gas, and live ammunition to clear out the two Cairo sit-ins. Members of the Muslim Brotherhood responded by storming and torching police stations. Forty-three police officers were reportedly killed. China's military flexes its muscle in the East China Sea amid Japan war shrine tensions. China has launched four days of live fire naval exercises in the East China Sea that coincide with the anniversary of Japan's defeat in World War II. The exercises come after Japanese cabinet ministers visited Tokyo's most controversial war shrine. China and South Korea, which both suffered under Japan's militarist expansion in the 1930s and 40s, have expressed concern at Japanese cabinet ministers' visit to the Tokyo Yasukuni Shrine as glorification of the country's militaristic past and aggression. Established in 1869 and funded by the Imperial Japanese government until 1945, the shrine has been dedicated to the nation's 2.5 million war dead, including controversial 1,000 convicted war criminals. The Chinese Foreign Ministry summoned Japan's envoy and issued a statement condemning the visits by nearly 100 Japanese lawmakers, saying they fundamentally attempt to deny and gloss over Japan's history of invasion. According to the Hong Kong-based South China Morning Post, the East China Sea drills will be conducted off the coast of Zhejiang province by the East Sea Fleet, which oversees the waters around the disputed Diaoyu Islands. Earlier this month, on August 8th, four Chinese Coast Guard vessels stayed a record 28 hours in the waters near islands claimed by both Japan and China. Japan summoned the Chinese envoy in Tokyo to lodge a formal protest. China and Japan have long struggled for the ownership of supposedly oil-rich islands located in the East China Sea. The islands are known as the Daiyu to the Chinese and Senkeku to the Japanese. The dispute over the islands and the maritime borders around them has continued for years. The Senkeku Islands have been controlled by Japan since 1895, but China insists that it has historic rights to them dating back to the 16th century. It is expected that there will be more drills in the East China Sea to build up the combat capabilities of the Chinese army, 
Nai Li Ziyong, director of the Sea Power and Defense Policy Research Institute at the Shanghai University of Political Science and Law, told the South China Morning Post. It is also possible that China's aircraft carrier will be will participate in some of these drills. China News Service reported that Laya Aning, the country's first aircraft carrier, which is refitted after buying a Soviet-era vessel from Ukraine, has also been dispatched from its home port of Qingdao, in the Shandong province. The ship is reportedly sailing to the northern Bohe Sea off Liaoning province, where a separate round of military exercises was launched on Thursday. Fukushima ground turning to quicksand. Buildings may topple. Do we? So, what's the fate and future of Fukushima? First of all, well, we've been talking you and I for two and a half years about、um, the danger of Fukushima Daiichi Unit Number Four simply collapsing. It's so damaged from the explosion, and there's some 200 tons of irradiated nuclear fuel in that storage pool.、Uh, in the context of what's going on now with this groundwater flooding of the site, because one of their mitigation measures, which is pretty、uh, not very well thought out. Was building a, a seawall by freezing the ground, and guess what? The groundwater is piling up behind the seawall. It's actually overtopping the seawall at the rate of 300 tons per day that's flowing into the ocean, radioactive water. But by backing up the water under the entire site, they are turning the ground into quicksand, and that's causing less、uh, stability, more instability. And there are structural engineers and nuclear engineers warning. That may be the the final straw that's needed to topple not only Unit Four but perhaps some of those other、uh, destroyed units with and, their. And,、uh, oh, go ahead. With their high-level radioactive waste、uh, stored in pools, 50 feet up in the air. Yeah, the 50 feet up in the air. When you said, you know, Unit Four has all this radioactive material in their pool, and they're concerned that Number Four is going to collapse. A lot of people they hear pool, they think hole in the ground. They may think it's going to collapse on top of it. Wouldn't that be nice? It'll just cover it up. No, the the pool is actually what five stories up, ten stories up, something like that. Yes, it was、uh, designed that way for ease of removing nuclear fuel from the operating reactor core into the high-level radioactive waste storage pool. But the situation is they can't support a crane to lift 100-ton loads of irradiated fuel in transfer casks. That's the radiation shielding out of the pool and onto the ground. That's why they're stuck. They can't get the waste out. Senator Wyden, back in April of 2012, visited Fukushima Daiichi, put on a radiation. Protection suit toured the site and came back to the United States. Called on the U.S. government at the highest levels to get over there and deploy the full resources of the U.S. government, because if that pool goes down and that fuel is still in there, it'll be on fire, and the radioactivity releases will dwarf what has happened thus far at Fukushima Daiichi. There's no radiological containment around the pools. In fact, there's not even a, a roof over them anymore. They're open air at this point. And the prevailing winds and the prevailing Ocean currents take water from the coast of Japan. Where? To North America. I mean,、uh, within days of the Fukushima Daiichi catastrophe beginning, we were getting、uh, fallout coming down in rain in the United States, not in insignificant quantities, and also, of course, the uh, the seafood.、Um, not only does the ocean's currents bring the radioactivity this way. But also、uh, the sea life itself, the bluefin tuna,、uh, migrated from Japan to North America and carried the radioactive cesium in its flesh over here. Wow, not a good time to be eating tuna.、Um, it, it would seem. Is it, has there been any has determination of the of radiation in seafood on the west coast of the U.S.? Well,、um, it's thrown upon the American citizen to do that for themselves. Our federal government seems to be busy with other things, but the situation is the same in Japan. Ordinary citizens, yes,、uh, tuna and、uh, sea kelp. There is、uh, radioactivity. Wow. Kevin Camps, the radioactive waste watchdog at Beyond Nuclear. You can log onto their site and read all about it. BeyondNuclear.org. Kevin, thank you. U.S. nuclear plants vulnerable to 9/11-style terror attacks. 
The more than 100 nuclear reactors across the United States are inadequately prepared to repulse terrorist attack, a new report warns. The U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, or NRC, presently requires that energy plants are capable of preventing attacks carried out by five or six people, according to the report entitled Protecting U.S. Nuclear Facilities from Terrorist Attack. The report rep prepared by the Nuclear Proliferation Prevention Project at the University of Texas focuses on the terrorist attacks of 2001 and warns the NRC to prepare for something much bigger down the road. The combined public and private security provided at the U.S.'s 104 commercial nuclear reactors and three research reactors is inadequate to defend against the maximum credible non-state adversary, the researchers said, adding that private sector nuclear facilities remain less protected than government facilities that face similar risk of theft of fissile material or radiological sabotage, which makes no sense. There also remains the risk of attacks from high-powered sniper rifles and rocket-propelled grenades, the researchers said. The report also draws particular attention to security at three research reactors, including one in Maryland that is situated 24 miles from the White House. These facilities are powered by highly enriched uranium, which could be used to make nuclear weapons if the supplies fell into hands of terrorists. The U.S. government has made some progress since September 11, 2001, when nuclear plants only had to only had to protect against attacks by three people, according to Alan Kuberman, the project coordinator and co-author of the report. That is a good sign of progress, but that does not address the concern we have about nuclear reactors, Cooperman said. Since 2001, the U.S. nuclear industry has spent over $2 billion on enhanced security, the report said, adding it is difficult to know if those enhancements have been adequate. A spokesman for the Nuclear Energy Sector's Trade Agency, the Nuclear Energy Institute, told Reuters that security at U.S. nuclear facilities had improved markedly since 9-11, with a total of 9,000 armed officers guarding them. But according to the report's author, even the seemingly robust number of officers would not be enough to fight off a well-coordinated terrorist attack. Prior to the revisions following the 9-11 attacks, the numbers of anticipated terrorist attacks attacking a nuclear site were kept relatively low because intelligence agencies generally assumed that they themselves were capable of detecting conspiracies of more than a few members. That assumption, the report says, was proven wrong by the events of 9-11 when 19 hijackers using commercial jets were as weapons of mass destruction successfully staged terrorist attacks on New York City and Washington, D.C. The NRC slammed the report, which was requested by the Pentagon as a rehash of arguments from a decade ago when the country was on high alert following the deadliest attacks on American soil. The report contained no new information or insight, David McClintyre of the NRC spokesperson told Reuters. He said the nuclear watchdog had bolstered security requirements for commercial nuclear power plants and was confident that these were adequately protected. The question now is how the U.S. government, which has been forced to trim back on federal programs in the aftermath of the economic crisis, will be able to foot the bill for more security at America's nuclear energy plants. Friends, I wanted to speak to you about a deadly phenomena that I call the Moo Cow Syndrome and the hazards of becoming infected by it. Let me read to you an article I wrote in 2006 which helps to explain the MC Syndrome. The article is as relevant today as it was when it was first written. Great cheese comes from happy cows or so say the producers of a commercial for California cheeses. Unfortunately, the ultimate fate of most cows, happy or otherwise, is the slaughterhouse. 
The mainstream news media tends to diminish the seriousness of current world events by mixing their broadcasts with a touch of entertainment, helping to create a sense of it's not so bad as it seems. But is our fate to be like that of happy cows? The Let Us Entertain You format only serves as a distraction while the clouds of war loom ominously on the horizon. The other evening, while watching one of the network's news shows, I couldn't help but become quite perturbed at the fact that the news had become mo little more than entertainment. They spent approximately five minutes interviewing and displaying some of Hollywood's plastic people with their idiotologies and a labyrinth of frivolous pursuits both on and off the stage of dreams and fairy tales. Meanwhile, stories of significant importance received only honorable mention or were completely kicked to the curb. If it were a slow news day, then by all means, entertain. But during a time when the entire world is inevitably stumbling towards an all-out thermonuclear war, entertainment should be the least of our concerns. Ever since the mid to late 1990s, China has been feverishly building up its military forces with the majority of preparation aimed at waging a successful short-term regional campaign. The primary objective in, in this military buildup is the defense of China. However, a significant component is to deter the United States from getting involved in any flare-up over Taiwan. As part of this deterrence, China has been steadily developing its capability to control the sea lanes in the western Pacific, provide an air defense shield through use of sophisticated anti-aircraft weapons, and to effectively counter any U.S. military retaliation. During a global intelligence assessment by the CIA, China's military buildup has been characterized as a threat to the United States. On June 1, 2005, Porter Goss, the director of the Central Intelligence Agency, informed the Senate Intelligence Committee that improved Chinese capabilities threatened U.S. forces in the region. He goes on to say, Beijing's military modernization and military buildup could tilt the balance of power in this Taiwan Strait. As China continues to strengthen its defense and offensive capabilities, it becomes a matter it becomes only a matter of time before Beijing moves to retake Taiwan. Peter Brooks, a former US Dep Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense said, "The US's immediate concern is that China will try to use its new military might on Taiwan to effect unification. China has 750 ballistic missiles aimed at Taiwan." some of which are capable of reaching U.S. troops stationed in Japan. Currently, the Pentagon is in the process of redeploying military assets in both Japan and South Korea. Make no mistake about it, war with China is coming. China's immovable determination to keep Taiwan as part of its territory, Taiwan's determination to remain free and independent, and the U.S.'s deeply rooted commitment to the defense of Taiwan can only spell disaster. Furthermore, although this future war will un undoubtedly begin as a regional conflict, the potential to escalate into World War III is a very real possibility. Richard Fisher of the U.S.-based International Assessment and Strategy Center said, not only can Chinese nuclear missiles now target the continental United States, the whole configuration of the new Chinese force is clearly designed with the United States as the hypothetical enemy. China is not the only hot spot that should be cause for alarm. Pakistan and India are regularly threatening to nuke each other over the much disputed territory of Kashmir. Then there's Iran, whose leader has publicly stated that Israel should be wiped off the map while seeking to develop nuclear reactors in order to provide critical components for nuclear warheads. Do they intend to make good on their threat? Popular opinion is that Israel may well opt to eliminate this threat by striking first. Is there any doubt that the Arab nations would consider a preemptive strike by Israel as a reason for an all-out assault? 
Once again, the U.S. is deeply involved in the defense of Israel, while both China and Russia are pursuing closer ties to the Arab nations. And let us not forget that terrorists have it in their minds to annihilate both Israel and the United States. The problem for them is, how can they fulfill this desire? Well, here's one possibility. Sometime shortly after the fall of the former Soviet Union, it had been reported by several reliable sources that approximately 48 or more suitcase-sized nuclear weapons went missing from Soviet stockpiles. Although Russian officials deny their very existence, it's a scary thought. Not to mention all of the biological and chemical weapons out there, with some being easily accessible and others not so easily, but still possible. Does great cheese really come from happy cows? Who cares? There are far too many life-threatening situations in the world to waste valuable time on frivolous pursuits. In a sidebar, whether or not you believe in the God of the Bible, the following events seem to parallel what was foretold thousands of years ago. The prediction, the kings of the north, Russia, and the east, China, align with Arab nations and move against Israel in the last days. The event, both Russia and China have been negotiating closer alliances with the Arabs and with each other. The prediction, that Israel would again become a nation with Jerusalem as its capital in the last days. The event, in May of 1948, Israel again became a nation, and in 1967, they regained control of Jerusalem. The prediction, men's hearts would fail them for fear of those things that are coming upon the earth in the last days. The events, earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes of historic proportions and in diverse places, pestilences and famines, wars and rumors of wars and terrorism, and the threat of being hit by asteroids, the holes in the ozone, global warming, the melting of the polar ice caps, and a weather system gone wild. Now here's a little food for thought. The Bible tells us that the generation which sees all these things take place will not pass away before the return of Jesus Christ. Have you given your life to Jesus Christ yet? Time is short. The Moo Cow Syndrome is a devastating and infectious man-made condition that should be avoided at all costs, unless you want to end up as hamburger. God bless you all.